one of the biggest things that's going on in the media at the moment, and again ties in with the whole lying concept, is underquoting. Yeah. So underquoting for anyone that's not familiar is basically where an agent says, "Oh, the property is going to sell for five to five fifty, knowing full well that the property is worth six fifty, mm, seven hundred. Yeah. It sells for that on the day, and all these buyers have come along." And essentially are really frustrated because they've spent time, they've spent money maybe getting a building inspection done yeah. on the property and well, they're, they're never going to buy it yeah, because they didn't stand a chance. They've of, been emotionally invested. That's a problem. Yeah. They get emotionally invested and then you dog, you dog them. They, they, and they miss out on other properties that they could have exactly, bought because exactly. they're hoping to get this one that they, they really don't have the budget yeah. for. But with that being said, and this is a taboo topic that no real estate agent ever wants to touch on, but now that we're out of real estate, we can address <laughs> Who cares, man? Who cares? <laughs> Let's crush them. It does work. It's, it's unethical. But I think something that everyone needs to address really is the fact that human nature is we want to get the best deal. Correct. And Correct. If, you see, if you see a Lamborghini and a Ferrari and the Ferrari selling for 200 grand lower than what a Ferrari's worth, of course everyone's going to be interested in buying it. And the same works with underquoting a house. Like yeah. if I say you can have a $700,000 house for five hundred, dollars of course there's going to be a line of people around the block. The biggest argument that I see come up all the time from people is why do you want to get 20 groups there when only the top three can afford to actually buy it? What's your thoughts on that? It is a tricky subject because it, it does tie back into uh, salesmen lies mm-hmm. or salespeople, saleswomen as well, liars. Um, but then it all... The, women. the great Well, the, the great area is you're, you're employed to get, like I said, get the best price for the owner. And underquoting, while it doesn't look the best, it's probably one of the best strategic plays an agent actually has because you've got to build activity, you've got to build interest and you want to build competition, whether it's an auction or a private sale. To get as many people to a home, you need to make it look as attractive as possible, not just visually, but also price-wise. So, you know, if you think a property might sell for eight fifty, but you say, listen, we're going to price it 750 to 770 for example, keep it... You're probably going to get, like I said, 10 to 15 more people coming through just because it's in their bracket. Mm. Whether, it, whether it falls out or not, that's auction competition on the day. You know, like I said, it's a tricky one because, like I said, you want to get the best price, you want to build competition, you're employed to do a job for your client. It's a strategic play to go and do it. Yeah. But obviously... It's not great. It's not, like I said, it's not really ethical because you are cheating a lot of people out of, well, you know, I'm, I'm drawing you to a property knowing full well you can't buy it. Yeah. And then the dialogue in the four weeks leading up to whether it's an auction or a sale campaign, the dialogue obviously to those people that you know probably can't afford it, the dialogue's going to be, well, listen, the interest is here. So come along on Saturday to see what, you, see what, you see what happens. You know yeah. what I mean? That's where it gets a little murky. Where it's just like, well, mm-hmm. you are leading people astray with, you know, just come on Saturday to see what happens. It's in your price range. The interest is here. But you know full well that there's probably three or four people that their interest is over here while the bulk of the group is down here. So. Real, real estate agents are really good at teaching. <coughs> Chris, who's actually doing the sound for us today, his sister <laughs> rang me, I think three weeks ago mm-hmm. when I was still in real estate and said, we're, we're looking at buying this property. What do you think? The agent said it's worth between, I think it was four to 450 or yeah. something like that. And I, I rang the guy and I said, you know, I've just looked at all the comparable sales. It looks like it's going to sell for over five or yeah, whatever it yeah. was. And uh, and he basically just said, yeah, look, there's a lot of interest. I'd be surprised if it's going to sell in the range. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when she rang him and asked the same question, he was saying, oh, look, we don't have an offer yet. So uh, knowing full well that he was going <laughs> to get several offers, but he just wouldn't actually nice. address the issue. He dodged the question. And then they put in an offer towards the higher end of the range and missed it by about 50 grand because it sold for 50 grand over Jesus. the price. But I think you've got to acknowledge at the same time how people go about shopping because I think the psychology is interesting of how people shop because what a buyer will do is every buyer does this. We all do this. We look at the price range and if it's five to 550, we go, I wonder if I could get it for less than five. <laughs> and then we go, all right, I'd probably pay five for it. So mm. you go along to the inspection. Yeah. And then you see 20 other people that are there. And if you like it, then you assume that every one of those other 20 people like Correct. it just and as much as you do. Exactly. And all of a sudden you start going, what do I have to pay to get it? I really like this. Yeah. I probably would pay 520. <laughs> and then the agent rings and goes, oh yeah, we've got quite a bit of interest. Mm. Um, we're expecting three or four offers. And you start going, how much over the top of the range do I have to pay? Yeah, and correct. that's why underquoting works. If you price it at 550 to six, which it's actually worth, mm-hmm. and I look online, I go, 550, I'd never pay that. <laughs> 
<laughs> and if I actually do go to the open, there's two other people there. I got, I got heaps of time. Exactly. I, I'm just going to lowball them. I'm in them here. I'm in here. How desperate they are to sell it. <laughs> That's exactly what the buyer's psychology is, which yep. is why underquoting works. Because people say that the bottom 17 people can't afford it, but the top three people that make the highest offers don't know that the other 17 people can't aren't afford willing it. to spend what they are. Yeah, correct, correct. Which is why it works. That's spot on, man. Spot on. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's one of those tricky things, man. Like you're either going to come across as a liar or a strategic genius. And it, it's, it, it's, it's one awkward because it's on one end, you've, you've got to be ethical. Yeah. But on the other end, you're employed to get the owner the best price. And yeah, that exactly. is the easiest way and most effective way to get yeah. the owner the highest possible price. Yeah, correct. Even but, though you're not allowed to do it. Exactly. Well, you're not anymore, but yeah. And also, like, the buyers, they're, they're, buyers are more savvy. They're a bit more smart now. Um, you know, so they, I think they assume if they see a property which they think is a bargain, mm. they're going to assume it's probably going to, if it's an auction property, it's probably going to go 10% higher than back, what's quoted. Back in the day, when yeah. every, you always the just first assume. question was, what's, what's, it, what's it really going to go for? And, and then the second question was, and what's the real price? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Even but, when you were quoting the real price, so you thought, this one's bloody, bloody over. Yeah. That was just part of their script to ask that, well, what that's the real thing. price was. But then it looks, as I said, before we move on, it gets even worse when you've got, um, when the agent does have a really good relationship with the vendor and they actually do have a reserve that's in the sale, in, in the quota mm. range, but the agent knows full well it's going to go well beyond. Mm. And it's funny being out of real estate, going to auctions and seeing that play out because you actually do see that, especially a lot out, we're in Doncaster at the moment, you see that a lot out here. Mm. A lot of properties quoted in the 1 to 1.1 and they'll sell for 1.2, 1.22, even in, when the market's but bad. But the reserve's set under 1. But market. the reserve is set, so the agent's like, I'm not going inside, I've got my instructions, we know the reserve price, it's within the range, you can bid with confidence, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so the owner's willing to release it within the range, but yeah, it's exactly. still never going to sell. Yeah, exactly. And the, the, thing that, the thing that people don't know, and I probably shouldn't say this on the pod, but I'm not in real estate anymore, the agent may have a kicker above a certain range. True. Commission comes into it. Yeah. Correct. Do you know what I mean? So it's, that's a tricky, tricky little situation there.